The today topic is what uh, what is to be bold to share the word, and 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 you know we need to be boldly to share the word. I I know so well myself. I am I am I am a little shy person, and I am little careful. And uh, I'm not the, the person that jump into a room and shouting, here I am. I'm more the type of person that uh, goes quiet into a new room, observing first, very careful. And uh, mostly often waiting to that somebody else start to talk with me before I start to talk. And... Uh, that's my person. Person, uh, I am, that's my person. That's how I am, and uh, and I'm not so good to to lead talking with people. That's very good if the yeah when the one I talk with talk a lot, so I can be quiet and listen only. That's uh, that's how I am, and I think many people are like that. I'm not so alone to be that, uh, but. But to, to preach and share the word, you know, it is, you, know you, you need to, to, to give something, you need to give an expression, you need to, to show yourself. And, that is, uh, and, and for that you need to be bold and, and boldly sharing what you have in your heart. And, and for me to share what I have in my heart, that is, that is the most easy way today, but that's, you know, I have I have been preaching now in in thirty plus year. I started back then in late uh, 19, 1989 uh, on a little street meeting, and there was first in nineteen ninety. I, I start to preach regularly, and it's just like some accelerated from that point, and. Um, and uh, and uh, but over these thirty years, I have been preaching regularly. But uh, there was when God called me to do that, I was told him, God, you take wrong person. That's not, you know. There's so many things I can do for you and your kingdom, but but not preach. That's not. That's not my conf profession at all. You know, you know that. Um, you know, if you, the pastor come in the church and put the microphone in my hand, I will be quiet. I, I could not find out what I should say at all. And if I say something, they will be totally wrong. So it was better to be quiet. Uh, yeah. So so. I, I, I was not in, in nature a, a, a big speaker and, and when we are in parties and so on and they ask me to, to hold or speak and I said please let somebody that are very good to do that. <laughs> uh, you, know, you know sometimes I, I ask my wife to say something instead. It's better because <laughs> Uh, yeah, must you ask me <laughs> like that, you know? But uh, but Paul, he he give a, a call to his follower, and in Ephesians chapter six, he write to the follower and says there in verse nineteen, pray also for me that whenever I open my mouth. Words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in change. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. Amen. That I can proclaim the gospel, the message about Jesus Christ with no fear at all. Only share the love, the power I feel in my heart to Jesus. Only 
share that without fear for what people will say, what people will do, or what people can think. Mm -hmm. Exactly what they will think about it. <laughs> Hallelujah. That is so powerful. He says, pray also for me. You know, they, do you think in the, the man, Paul, he must be great, he must be very strong, and, and he must have really made an impact. I know when I was young, I go in a church, and the pastor there, he was, wow, so powerful preacher, and he was so strong, and uh, oh, you was so blessed to listen to him. But you know, when he go off the stage, he he he, he will mostly not talk. He's, uh, he 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 like to have his wife close to him so she can talk with people that come up. So uh, because he he was so shy behind the scene, and and, and uh, I have seen that many times. You know that that people that God chose to use. He don't use them in the profession where they are very good. They use, he used them on, on an area in the life that, where they are not good. And, and instead to, to uh, boast the goodness, the good thing in their life, God boast the weakness in the life to use them on a strong way in that weak areas in the life. And what I mean there is not that, you know, weak, we many times talk about sin like weakness, but not, not, not here. You know, we have different things in our personal life that can be weak. That is not a strong area in our life. And God chose to use that area in our life to really show his power, his grace and mercy in our life. I was not a, a, a big speaker and I am still not a big speaker. Uh, I am not so happy to talk a lot. People think that you know you, you preach long, you preach a lot and you, you, you preaching is like they never stop. Yeah, yeah. It is like then you know the anointing is there to be honest with you. And I have I have sometimes problem to stop, to, to speak, you know, because I, I, I have, feel sometimes that I have so much I will give to you. I will share with you with no fear the, the good things the Lord Jesus Christ have blessed me with. Oh, I cannot stop to bless you with what I, he have blessed me with. You know, that's maybe a weakness with me that is, I, I cannot stop when I start to, to, to take out of that treasure from my inside. So uh, that's it's, 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 it's blowing over. But so, so fast I stop to take from that treasure I will be quiet because I don't have so much in myself I, I like to share. And, and, uh, and that's why Paul said, pray for me, so I am fearless, shall, shall share. The words may be given me so that I will fearless make known the mystery of the gospel. That's what he said, for which I am an ambassador in chains. And in Colossians chapter 4 and verse 2, he says uh -huh. this to the follower in Colossians. He says that devote, devote yourself to prayer. Give yourself to prayer. Be, you know, be, be devoting, not give up. Take it, go for it. Don't pray only short and think what will happen now. No, continue to pray. Till you see the result. Continue to pray. And he said, devote yourself to prayer. Being watchful and thankful. You know, don't fall in sleep. Don't, don't think, ah, it's nothing happened. Don't continue to watch. Continue to keep on. Continue and do it in thankfulness. 
And so he continued here. Not only pray for you and your situation and the, the prayer request that is around you, but pray for us too. So when you are in the prayer, pray for us. So when you are praying, pray for us in the church. Pray for your pastor. Pray for your leaders. So pray for us. Why? Two, that God may open doors for our message so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ for which I am in change. Pray that I may proclaim it clearly as I showed. Amen? Don't start to, to, to really be clear, to talk about what is the important part of the message. Don't start to talk about uh, this and that and whatever uh, because there's so many wonderful things to talk about and we are very good on that in our church today we talk about everything and we're missing the, the central what is in the central is Jesus Christ it is the message about him and that's what he write here in the second Corinthians chapter 5 uh, the, in verse 20, why I take this verse because it's so important because this is the, the center of our message, the message, the power preach, the, 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 there should be a message, the center of our message too. We have so many favorite topic and they are good. Many of this topic is so good, but some topic is, to be honest with you, very extreme. And as a believer, we should not have anything with that topic to do at all. But we are, you know, they are like some tindering in our ears. Oh, that sounds good. I like that. And so we give us to that. We should not do that. Keep in the center of the message. And he says in the, the second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20 to 21. We are therefore the Christ's ambassadors. There's the third time I read ambassadors here now. And he says, as truth through God were making his appeal to us, we implore you on Christ's behalf. Be Reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that so that in him we may might become the righteousness of God. Amen. Through him you are made righteousness. Wow. You are made. Not by yourself, but by him. Are not wonderful? We receive his word in his grace. And he has do the work for us. It's not that the word says you need to do this. You, you, you need to follow the Ten Commandments. Oh, especially the Sabbath. It's so important. And if you don't do that, oh, 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 that will not work well for you. That is to take it as a law. Like something I need to do. No, if you take it in the grace. Because you need to take it of the light of the grace of God. The word will say, wow, it's a blessing. It's a blessing for me to do this. It's a blessing to follow his word. It's a blessing to understand his Ten Commandments. It's a blessing with Sabbath. It's for us. It's not God to blame us. It's for us to bless us. It's a blessing to have a day off. And really get new power for the coming week. It's a blessing to, to follow his command. That because it's showing us how to live a life in righteousness. Yeah, but he has made us righteousness. Yeah, that's true. He made you. So you, you don't need 
to follow the law to be rightness but the the love to him because he have do it for you make you to live a holy life in line with his word in the light of his grace that we understand we cannot make it in ourselves everything is because of him that, that have reconciled us with God there is this difference there is the difference but too many Christians end up to, to only follow the word and lose the grace And they will be rightness, righteousness in themselves and they start to condemn another Christian. But if you take his word in the light of grace, you start to condemn yourself and cleanse your own life so that you can live in his holiness not to show people who good you are but to be accepted that's a big difference and we need to live that life Paul says that to be his preacher to be a servant of God that have a price it's not easy and in, in the second Corinthian, we, we are still in the second Corinthian, chapter 6, the next chapter from the one we read before. And verse 4, he says this, Rather, as a servant of God, we command ourselves, ourselves in every way. Amen. As a servant of the Lord, I, we, 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 we command ourselves, ourselves, amen, in every way. That is, is, is really to work on yourself, working on your salvation, working on your holiness, working on to live according to his will not as a lowly way when i need to do it if i don't do it i'm judged no you do it because you love him you love him of all your heart like john is written in the first letter he write that like he is clean so will we live a clean life we are longing for that that's because we take it by grace. Because if we only take it by grace and no, not uh, a foundation on this word, there will be only grace, 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 grace. And when you only live in grace, 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 you, you, you don't need any word at all. And the, the law, we don't have any law anymore. We only live by his grace. What is the result? You stay in your sins. If you will be delivered from your sins, you need to let his word change you. Hallelujah. By his grace, not by your might. That's a big difference. In my might, I will be self-righteousness and I start to condemn other people. But if I do it in his grace... I will be clean, I will be made holy, I will take the part and they maybe take a whole life. <laughs> take, I can promise you, they take a whole life because we never ever be complete. When I was 20, I think I have understand this and there are other people that have misunderstand the whole thing. So they were stupid and I was clever. Now I'm 50 plus. I understand. I have not understood anything. 
I am still learning. <laughs> and I am so thankful there are so many Christian and brothers out there. They have understand little more than me. And they can tell things that will wake me up. Are they not wonderful? That we can have a communion and fellowship with one another and learn from one another. From one another's mistake, from one another's success, and, and you know, and, and and together we are growing in our faith. Amen. Are they not wonderful? That's you know, that's that's one of the good things to I think is to be older. Yes, you be you be more and more little little humble to to your view of the world and you you will be more and more blessed. For a couple of years ago I I, I uh, before I listened to you know, some, a special type of preachers, they're mostly preaching the same thing I do. And of course I I was blessed with the preaching. But for a little time ago I, I start to listen to preachers that I know don't really share my stand in, in life or my theology or my my belongs to my type of organization. Start to listen to them and I and you know I I, I start really to be blessed to be honest with you. Because when they explain things that I know so well, I have read and teach it so many times. When I, when they share it, they have another light and what I have, not little another way to view it. And I can tell you, I get so blessed. Oh, hallelujah! So we need to open our mind. And see it so much more. And it's, it's a great blessing. You know, God has blessed his preacher, his servant. But here he says in the uh, in the second Corinthian, you know, I was mostly start to miss the point here. And he says there we are, we command ourselves in every way, in great endurance, in troubles hardship and distress, in beatings, in imprisonment, in riot, in hard works, sleepless night and hunger, in purity, understanding, patience and kindness, in the Holy Spirit, and in sincere love, in truthful speech and in the power of God, with weapons of righteousness in the right hand and in the left, through the glory and dishonor, bad reports and good reports, genuine, yet regarded as Im impostors, known, yet regards as unknown, do, uh, dying, and yet we live on, beaten, and yet not killed. This is strong word from Paul. What we he need to go through as a, a servant of God. You know, that is many situations. You know, when because when you stand up to really do what God has told you to do, not all people will accept that. Not all people will say, Yes, wonderful. Many people will misunderstand you. Many times you will you do your best to really say it on a very good way, but still people will misunderstand you. That's why he says here in Ephesians, you know, that you, you know, pray for me so I speak on my on the right way. The, uh, and and um, and uh, both in, in Colossians and Ephesians, it says, you know, as I should, proclaim his word as I should. You know, it is, it's, you know, you know, it's so easy to, to uh, it's so hard. You know, many times uh, when I have preached, to be honest with you, uh, I, I feel that I should not say that way, I should say that way. Sometimes I feel, you know, that record I have done there, 
I should throw that. That was not good. I, I, I remember one time there was a record I had to. And I was really sure, shall I really broadcast this record? I was not sure. And I was very close to throw it away. Because there was something I have said there and I was not really sure after if that was correct. And I let my co-worker look on it and he said, you know, you need to broadcast this. This is good. Yeah, but I say, it was not, but he said, that, that's only a small thing, because you need to see the, the whole picture. I said, okay, okay, uh, go for it. So, because he was the one, his name was on the station, so it was not my name, so if they hang someone, they hang him. But I don't like to hang someone other too, so that's up to him. But he take the decision, he will broadcast it. He broadcast this program. And what he not told me, he broadcast it on several stations. And on one station, a woman looked this program at 5 o'clock in the morning. And when she see that program, she, was, she feel the Spirit of God in her life. And she feel to be delivered from uh, from uh, unforgiveness in her life and and her testimony after a week she told that uh, every day had been totally different from her because the Lord have met her and and she have a, a big change in her life so that I feel not sure that program was good enough. God could use that. God could make something in another person's life that come back with a testimony. And, and, and that's the wonderful, because when we're preaching the Word of God, the Word of God is doing what it sends out to do. Not only and it will not come back to God before they have fulfilled what it was called to do. So I have, on the same time, I sometimes can feel, was this really good? I have a respect for that what I have preached, what I have shared, I need to, I have a respect for that. And then that's why when, when I see programs with different preachers, I have a respect for it because I see because that this is, is a word of God are teaching. The word of God is shared and when the word of God is shared and, and as a message, it, it will fulfill what is sent out to do. Maybe we don't see it, maybe we never hear it too. I, I, I remember I, I meet a couple and they have seen a program I was in and share a little word there. But that little word I sharing, I have only, it was a long program, I have maybe two, three minutes in this program only. Hitting this couple enough to totally change their life. They live a very bad life. But that little, little word that was from the Word of God changed their life. Was this because of me? Absolutely not. Because of God. When you speak it out on the right way, that Paul say, let me speak the way I should do. Share, proclaim the gospel that our way I should do. Amen. I will go, we will go through many hardships. We will go through so many things and a lot of misunderstanding that he says in 2 Corinthians 6 and 4. But you know, and in Acts chapter 4, we read about the disciples, how they go through hardship and they was told not allowed to speak in the name of Jesus Christ 
uh, and so on. And they need to to listen to the leaders and the elders in in the people. And um, but what are they doing? They was joined together. They pray together. And in this prayer, they pray in Acts chapter four twenty nine to thirty one. Now, Lord, consider the treat and uh, enable your servant to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform miracles, signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And after they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken. And there were all filled with the Holy Spirit and speak the word of God boldly. Hallelujah. They went out and speak the word boldly. Hallelujah. Nothing could stop them. Nothing could hold them back because the Holy Spirit was with them. And when the Holy Spirit is with you, there is nothing that can hold you back to share the word of God. Whatever, maybe you are not so uh, like to speak a lot by yourself, but you know, if you can share the word of God, the anointing is there, his power is there. Paul says, by the power of God. He proclaimed the gospel by what? The power of God. Not by himself. You should not do it in yourself. That's why when you pray for boldness, to boldly uh, share his word, he, he is doing it. Let us pray together. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus, for everyone that are following us here today. I thank you that you lead them, take care of every one of them. And I pray that you will open up for them the understanding and revelation in your word. And to boldly go out and, and preach your word, share your word, wherever they are in the school, in the work, in the in uh, every area in their life where they are moving and going, that they can have the boldness to share the goodness, all the good things they have been given from you. They they can share with with friends, with colleagues, with people around them, wherever they go. And I thank you, Lord, for the bold, you open up the boldness to really speak what you should speak in the name of Jesus. And I pray that you are with us, everyone, and that you lead us and help us, and that you take care of us, and especially the ones that are sick, that your healing power is over their life, that they will stand up from the sick bed and be healed in your name right now in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit amen god bless you and see you next week and hopefully next recording are from the church as usual god bless you